life of the Vago family and in our church family. And we're grateful to the Lord for uh, this special day that we've been looking forward to for some time. And uh, it, it all began about four months ago when on the first Sabbath in February, in fact, it was Sabbath February 1, that Kate came walking into the church and uh, later would tell, uh, tell us that uh, she felt prompted by the Holy Spirit to come. Uh, we had a small prayer group that had been praying for someone special to show up that we could start Bible studies with. And uh, praise God, the, uh, the Vago family was the answer to that prayer. And uh, that began a journey that has lasted over the last several weeks. And uh, we have had a small group uh, that um, has been meeting with them and uh, sharing uh, the uh, teachings of God's word uh, together with them. And it's been wonderful to watch them grow. And so um, I would like to uh, invite uh, the members of that small uh, prayer group uh, to come and join me uh, up here. Um, we've got the Delinsky family, so please come and join me right up here. And we've got uh, Christy. Uh, there is another family that uh, regularly attended uh, our uh, study group and was a part of our fellowship and, and prayer time uh, with uh, the Vago family. And that was uh, the Marenko family, Joel and Abby. But many of you know that they have uh, sustained some challenges of their own with the birth of their uh, daughter, Adriella, um, who has been in the hospital uh, virtually since the day she was born on the 6th of July. Uh, however, I've just been given a report that she was finally sent home on Thursday. Praise the Lord. Uh, but sadly, they are not able to be here with us uh, today, but they were part of this journey. Uh, but I know that they are with us in their thoughts and in their prayers today. But I would also like to invite uh, uh, friends and other family members of uh, the Vagos to come and join us. So uh, Devin and uh, the rest of the family, Amory, please come and join us with your children. And uh, other people that have established a close uh, a relationship uh, with the Vago family, please join us up here as we uh, have this time of celebration together. It's been indeed uh, a grand uh, journey uh, that we have taken and, um, and to see uh, God's work. I asked uh, the, am we, are we not on? Okay, I asked uh, the Vago family if they would um, share their personal testimony as to um, what this event means to them and uh, everything that has led up to this day. And so um, we're going to start with Taffy. Taffy, what do you have to share? Well, <clears throat> about six months ago when I stepped foot into this church, you know, learned about God and His Word for the first time, it was a really amazing experience. But... <clears throat> now that I'm going to be baptized into this church family, it's like really amazing to me. Do you have a special uh, passage of scripture that <clears throat> has been meaningful for you? Yes, I like Revelation 22, 18 to 19. For I testify unto every man that hears the words of the prophecy in this book, if any man shall add unto these things, <clears throat> God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Amen. 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 All right. Kate, do you have something to share? I do. Do you mean hold it? Over the years, I've searched for the perfect self-help book, looking for healing, inspiration, motivation, or ways to deal with anxiety and stress, and I never found any answers that worked for me. Until now, that is. My family and I started coming to Simi Valley Adventist Church in February of this year, and I remember listening one Sabbath morning as Pastor Jan gave her sermon. I don't know if you remember, the topic was on marriage and family. And at the end, I remember turning to Dave and I said, Dave, 
I said, the Bible is like an instruction manual for life. And that was new to me. But through prayer and thoughtful study with pastors Jan and Phil and various members of the church, I know that the Bible is indeed our instruction manual. It has all the answers. I've discovered that my part in all of this is to keep going to God for love, for confession, for forgiveness, for grace and strength and power. He will continue to work in me so that others may see him in me and be drawn to him. In exchange, I am learning to live a full, abundant, purposeful life which touches and blesses many, especially myself. What a wonderful way to live. And my favorite passage is Matthew 11, 28 to 30. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and yet shall find rest unto your souls. Amen. And Dave. Um, we were supposed to write a paragraph on what it meant to us to join the Adventist church, and um, I couldn't whittle down my um, paragraph, so it ended up being like a page and a half, uh, typewritten, single space. So luckily I forgot it, lucky for you guys. So I'm just going to give you the highlight. Um, the, the thing that impressed upon me most was when the first night we were here, um, I knew that we were home. Uh, Kate and I had been uh, looking for uh, 21 years, essentially, um, for a place where we could worship, um, express our, our Christian uh, values and um, uh, uh, prayers. And we tried lots of different churches, and none of them ever really felt right. We tried uh, denominational ones, um, big box warehouse churches. Um, ironically, before I met Kate, I was actually I was saved um, by Jesus, accepted Christ as my Savior in a Messianic Jewish temple. And, uh, you know, being born into an Italian Catholic family, I, um, because they still identify as Jews, I was really felt like a fish out of water there. But their message was pure, and that's where I started. But um, that first night, I, I went to Pastor Phil, and I said, um, when can we get baptized? And I knew right away. And, you know, he's professionally and um, compassionately, he said, well, you know, let's, let's get the foundation built first. And in the ensuing six months of uh, studying the Scripture, Bible study, Sabbath school, fellowships. Um, we've learned so much, and yet I realize that there's so much more to learn, and I, and I really I look forward to that. And, but the overriding principle that I think I learned was that, um, uh, that it's, it's not, a, it's not a, a chore or a burden for, for me uh, or us as Christians to um, develop ourselves and to uh, abide more fully in Christ and, in, and live by God's Word. It's it's, um, it's it's a labor of love. It's the least we can do to honor Christ for the supreme sacrifice he made for, for us um, and for me especially, um, you know, insignificant um, this, you know, in the scope of the universe, a practically non-existent um, sinner uh, who really didn't deserve it, and yet he did that for me um, so willingly, and it's a sacrifice that I'll never be able to comprehend, but for which I'll always be eternally grateful and that's oh, and my and I, f I forgot my uh, favorite verse. But luckily, it's a short one, so I remembered. It's um, Revelation twenty two thirteen. Uh, I am Alpha and Omega, the first, the first and or the uh, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. That's it. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, <clears throat> one other thing that I'd like to take a moment to share is that uh, this was truly. Um, uh, an effort that was led by um, uh, a group of people in the in the church family, and Pastors Jan and I were there to facilitate the process. Uh, but uh, the key components that really helped to make this work and to build the fellowship and the nurture and the uh, and the support uh, were the members of this congregation that were part of that small group uh, that that helped to develop the friendship and the relationships um, with the Vago family that have led to this day. And Kurt, you've got a microphone right in front of you. I'd like for you and Colleen, um, I'd like uh, Christy to just take a minute. Um, what was this like for you uh, to be a part of this uh, Bible study process? Uh, because you folks truly were the ones that helped uh, lead out in this process and facilitate uh, this step today. And Pastor Jan and I are here merely to, uh, to lower them in the water, but Thank you for the part you played. What did it mean to, to you folks? 
I'll tell you what, uh, <clears throat> nothing like being put on the spot. But I have really, amazingly enough, through all of my experience uh, in the Adventist Church, I had never gone through a Bible study with somebody from beginning to end. And uh, so it was an incredible privilege. Let me tell you, if you ever get the opportunity, it's the most thrilling thing you'll ever do, and, and you won't ever want to stop. It is just a, a crazy fun thing to do, especially for such intelligent people like this. I mean, it was just amazing to me that they were saying things, well, this makes sense. It makes sense. And we, over and over, they were a little uh, upset at the uh, things that they had been taught throughout their life about what the Bible said. And then to see it in plain, plain uh, view there, uh, it was just an amazing experience. Well, I just want to thank God today for Dave and Kate and Taffy, Devin, and the friendship that we've developed. To me, the most special part of this was disciplining myself, too, to go through studies with you and to experience um, the joy of seeing the Holy Spirit teach you, teach us, and, and really kind of develop a, a deeper fellowship uh, for our whole church. Your coming here has, has helped our whole church, and we are... We love you, and we're excited to continue a relationship with you and Jesus. Um, Dave, Kate, and Taffy, um, I'm just I'm very happy to have gotten to know you and to know Devin uh, during this time, and um, we just wish you so much love, um, and we're so happy that, that you came here to our church because throughout the Bible studies, um, you've taught me a lot, um, and that's that's the most glorious kind of teaching is 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 what God can can teach us through each other and through His Word. So we're very happy for you. God Amen. bless you. Amen. But we had such a wonderful time. I mean, I I would recommend this method. We would get together and have supper together. And we just all bring some food and we would just fellowship. And we always decide on, okay, what are we going to have next week? And the fellowship, I feel like, was 50% of the, uh, the fun uh, that we did. And then we could, we could just study together. And it's just, it was just a wonderful thing. We're not going to, it's better than Monday night football. Right. <laughs> Praise God. Because we met on Monday nights. <laughs> Praise God. Well, now uh, is the time that uh, we want to. Um, affirm this decision that you have made. And I, as I shared with you in this process, um, baptism is kind of like a marriage to Jesus. And uh, Dave and Kate, when the two of you got married 20-some uh, years ago, uh, you exchanged vows. And so today, uh, we are going to share uh, uh, your baptismal vows and uh, get your affirmation from the three of you uh, to your decision uh, to live for Christ. So, do you, Dave, Kate, and Taffy, acknowledge the existence of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, recognizing that your salvation comes only by accepting the grace of Christ's atoning sacrifice and His righteous life? Yeah. yeah. Because of what He's done for you, do you so choose to forsake the world and follow Jesus, recognizing that He is your friend and intercessor in the heavenly sanctuary, and that he alone can provide you strength to live the Christian life and pick you up when you fall. Yeah. Yeah. Do you believe in the inspiration of God's word and desire to regularly study and share its truths with others through your personal effort and influence? Yeah. 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 Because of your love for Jesus, do you choose to obey his law, not as a means of salvation, but because of salvation, including the celebration of the seventh day Sabbath as a special time of communion with your creator and redeemer, Jesus Christ and his followers? Yes. yes. Do you choose to prepare for the soon coming of Christ, ordering your life in harmony with the principles of Christian living? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Do you desire to follow Jesus, being baptized by immersion as a public expression of faith in him and his forgiveness of your sins? Yes. Yeah. Do you, Dave, Kate, and Taffy, accept God's last day prophetic movement and desire to become a member of this local congregation of the worldwide Seventh-day Adventist Church? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
And so our dear friends, new brothers and sisters in Christ, Dave and Kate, because of your desire to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, because of your desire to ask him to be on the throne of your heart, we now we baptize you, you in the name, name of the, the Father, Father, and in the name of the Son, and, and in the name, name of the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. Uh, okay, Kate uh, uh, gave me was coming to give me a high five last Sabbath at the uh, at the Vespers, and then she, all of a sudden she pulled her hand away and she says, "Oh, maybe that's not appropriate to high five a pastor." I says, "Hey, it's appropriate. In fact, let's do it in the baptistry." <laughs> We now baptize you in the name of the Father, Father and in the, the name, name of the, the Son, and, and in the, the name, name of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, um, God is doing amazing things, and he will continue to do amazing things. Thank you. You may take your seats. We are uh, going to be having a special prayer of consecration uh, a little bit later in the service to ask for the anointing of God's Spirit upon uh, the Vago family. Uh, they've been baptized by water, but we want uh, them to be baptized by the power of the Holy Spirit, and we're going to be having that a little bit later in the service. But you know, um, God is moving in some amazing ways. I want to let you know that last Sabbath, when I preached on the subject of baptism and telling the story of Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch, and gave people an opportunity to respond, uh, there were a number of requests for baptism in this, in this uh, church. Uh, excuse me, is anyone listening to me? I want to repeat that. Maybe you didn't hear me. I need to pull this microphone down. I guess you didn't hear me. I said last Sabbath, at the end of my sermon on baptism, I made an appeal and we handed out some little cards and there were several responses and requests for baptism. And over the next several weeks and months, this baptistry is going to need to be filled again. Amen? In fact, in just three weeks, we're going to be having another baptism. And I'm hoping we're having one in September and every month till the uh, end of the year, and it wouldn't bother me if it happened on a very regular basis. Amen? The Vago family are a testimony to what Jesus said in Luke chapter 10 and verse 2, when he said, the harvest truly is great. The harvest truly is great. You heard what they said. For 21 years they have been searching, looking, for Bible truth. And praise God, God brought them to this point. And we want to say thank you, Lord, for answering their prayer and fulfilling that desire and that void that existed in their heart. But you know, there may be others here, others who last Sabbath may have heard that sermon on, on uh, Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch as he was baptized. Those of you right now who have eyewitnessed the baptism of Dave and Kate and Taffy. And the Holy Spirit is working on your heart, and you're saying, wow, it's time for me to say yes to Jesus. It's time for me to take this step, to begin the preparation process for this same event in my life. If the Holy Spirit is working on you today to take this step, then I invite you to talk to Pastor Jan or myself at the end of the service and say, hey, listen, I'm ready to start that step. I'm ready to begin to prepare for Bible baptism. May the Holy Spirit work on your heart as you process that decision and make it for His kingdom's sake. Let's pray.
Father in heaven, we are grateful today for this event. Uh, we recognize that all heaven is rejoicing uh, over uh, what just took place in the baptism of the Vago family. And I'm asking and praying, Lord, that uh, you would continue to work on the hearts of, of, of all of us. But there are some in this congregation today who are sitting here and contemplating this decision and saying, man, I need to make this too. I need to come clean with Jesus. I need to make a fresh start. I need to say, Lord, I'm ready to, to take that step. And then there may be those who have taken that step before that are saying, for whatever reason, I have a need for rebaptism. So, Lord, lead those individuals to make that decision and to respond appropriately. And then, Lord, we are looking forward to that day when you come again and we can rejoice with you forever in the earth made new. We ask and pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. You know, by special request, we are now going to sing a song that is Taffy's favorite song from a sermon series that Phil did just a few weeks ago. And we've asked Taffy if she would like to come up and sing that with us. And it looks like she's bringing a little moral support for that. So Taffy, come on up. This is her favorite song. So by request, People of God. Most of you know this song now. Let's sing it together. Taffy's favorite. With your lips let us sing one confession. With our hearts full to one truth alone. For he has erased our transgressions, claimed us and called us his own. Listen to these words. Hear us, O spirits of darkness, so you will know where we stand. We are his servants, purchased with scars, brought by the blood of the Lamb. Yes, the blood of the Lamb. Makes us the people of God, called by His name, called from the dark and delivered from shame. We're one holy race, saints everyone, because of the blood of Christ, Jesus the Son. Blessed people of God. Delivered from shame, one holy race, saints everyone, because of the blood of Christ, Jesus the Son. Before we sing the last chorus, we now invite you to come to our garden of prayer. Bring your burdens, bring your praises and just come and join us down at the Garden of Prayer while we sing this uh, last uh, chorus through. We're the people of God. All right, come on down. We're the people of God, called by His name, called from the dark, Delivered from shame, one holy race, saints everyone, because of 
Before we have our prayer, we are going to, uh, included in this prayer, going to have a special prayer of consecration for the uh, for the Vago family. And so, Dave, uh, I need to see you up here. We want to invite you uh, to to join us right here, and we are going to have a special laying on of hands in the New Testament, uh, particularly in the Book of Acts. There are examples of. After someone was baptized by immersion, they were baptized. Uh, they had experienced a laying on of hands and uh, uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit to gift them for service for the cause of Christ. And so that is what we are going to do. We're going to ask and pray now God's special anointing on the Vago family. And I would like to invite all of our elders to join me up here for this. All of our uh, ordained uh, ministers here in the congregation. Uh, to join us for this special uh, prayer of anointing that we are going to have in the laying on of hands for um, the uh, Vago family. Let's pray. Father, we are so thankful for this special day, the lives of Dave and Kate and Taffy. And we know that heaven is rejoicing over this grand and glorious event as well. And while they experienced uh, baptism by immersion of water, we're now asking that you immerse them in the power of the Holy Spirit, that you pour your Spirit out upon them. Lord, I know from conversations that I've had with them as I've gotten to know them, uh, they don't want to just be baptized to hold membership in a church or to occupy a pew. They want to be active in sharing the good news of Jesus with others. The good news that has changed their lives, they want to see change the lives of others. So Lord, I pray that you pour your spirit out upon them. Gift them in special ways so that they will know the service that you are calling them to do for the cause of Christ. Lord, I'm asking that they would fulfill this special radical prayer of Luke chapter 10. The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. That you would cast them out, that you would hurl them out into the harvest, that they might be active laborers for the cause of Christ, and that there might be souls in your kingdom because of their service for you. So, Lord, in every atmosphere that they uh, are presented, every place they are uh, for uh, Dave and his uh, activities and his, uh, in his work, I pray that you would give him divine encounters. I pray the same for Kate as she uh, is a nurse over at Simi Valley Hospital, that you would give her divine encounters for Jesus and that you would use them mightily. And the same for Taffy. She's young, but Lord, she's enthusiastic and I know you can use her for your cause. And so I pray that you'd bless them to this end. And now, Lord, we come to you with all of our needs, all of our, our prayer requests and all of our praises. We are so thankful for your goodness and your grace and your mercy. And we wish to give you honor and glory and praise for that. But Lord, we have special needs. And some of your people are, are here at the front now in this garden of prayer. They have petitions in their heart that you know what they are and you can respond to those needs. I'm asking and praying that you would do so. Lord, for anyone else in this congregation who has an unspoken request, you know the heart. I pray that you'd bless in every way. I pray that you would, uh, again, use us all to be active in our service for you. Lord, I ask and pray that you would anoint the lips of Pastor Jan today as she brings the message of Scripture that you have given to her. And Lord, we look longingly uh, to the day that you will come. The world is experiencing so much trouble and turmoil right now, and we are looking for that eternal peace that we will have spending forever with you. May that day be soon, we ask and pray in Christ's name. Amen. Because of
Well, now we have one more piece of business that we need to take care of with you folks. And before you all leave the platform here, uh, we want to, Taffy, come here, we want to officially welcome you into the family. Uh, you've been baptized by immersion and a prayer of anointing for the Holy Spirit. But now we want to officially welcome you, as was your desire, to become a part of the Adventist family uh, in Simi Valley. It was very interesting, uh, if, if, by the way, uh, these are your baptismal certificates that you can take home at the end and um, uh, customize for you. It's very interesting to discover, uh, Kate, uh, you seem to like the 26th of the month. Uh, I couldn't help but notice you were born on the 26th physically. Uh, you were married on the 26th of the month. And you were reborn now on the 26th of the month. So there must be something special about the 26th of the month. I don't know if you thought that before, but as I was filling out your documents, I noticed that. I'm sorry, what was that? If I'm correct, um, Ellen G. White was born on the 26th of the month, too. Okay. <laughs> now, that may be a fact of trivia that you know that you have over me. I, I don't know that. So, anyway, well, we want to officially welcome you to the family. What is your pleasure uh, regarding their desire to become a part of the Adventist family in Simi Valley? Is there a motion? And a second? And everybody else said? Amen. Amen. Welcome to the family. God bless you. God bless you. I need a microphone back when the... Uh, Vagos first came to uh, church, the first Sabbath that they were all here together as a family. It so happened that uh, Greg and Renee Evans were worshiping with us that Sabbath. He was providing special music, and uh, they had an opportunity Sabbath afternoon. They came over to our house, and we kind of had a little musical jam session, and the Vago family came, and the Evans had a chance to get to know the Vagos, and again, that was their first Sabbath. A couple of weeks ago, we had the opportunity to be with the Evans in another little musical uh, experience on a Sabbath afternoon, and we shared with them that uh, the Vagos were going to be baptized today. And even though they live all the way out in the Loma Linda area, they couldn't resist coming and celebrating this day. And so uh, Greg has some special music to share with us, and we're glad that they can be here to eyewitness this event as well. Okay, we're on. Good morning, everyone. We have guitar, too. What a joy it is to be here. We really appreciate the invitation uh, for this special day. Um, the song I'm going to sing is called Jesus, I Believe in You, and I think there's no more appropriate song to sing on the day of a baptism because we have had three people just publicly declare to us that they believe in Jesus. Isn't that wonderful? I just, I, I love that public declaration and what baptism stands for. Um, I had an opportunity this past week to tell someone that I believed in Jesus. I'll tell you a very brief story that I was in a store. I, we actually lived down in Temecula area, not uh, not Loma Linda, but uh, I was down uh, at a store. Uh, I work in healthcare, and I was, they sell scrubs and shirts and t-shirts, you know, just stuff like that. And I was in there picking up a few things. And I, I got done with what I had wanted to purchase. And um, the man at the counter, uh, he's a Middle Eastern man. I bought stuff there before, and I talked to him a couple times. And he was sitting there leaning on the counter. It was kind of a slow afternoon, and he was reading a small black book. And I got up to the counter, and he was so engrossed in the book, he did not really notice that I was up there and ready. And it was just a matter of seconds, so I didn't really say anything because I, I figured he'd see me shortly. And 
sure enough, he did. And he said, oh, I'm, I'm, and he's the owner of the store. He said, oh, I'm so sorry. I said, I, I, I didn't notice you. I, I was reading. And I said, what is that you're reading? And he looked at me and he said, it's the Koran. And, and I thought that was the case. Uh, uh, and so he said, right after that, he said, um, I hope that's okay with you. I don't know what you believe. And I looked at him and I said, I believe as strongly as I believe in anything else of the freedom of religion. And I would fight any government intrusion into your right to practice your religion as you believed that you should do in your heart. That's what I believe. And he looked at me and he says, I love you. <laughs> and he shook my hand and I thought he wanted to hug me over the counter because I'm sure he gets all sorts of strife, you know, reading that book and, you know, with all the things going on in our world today. And then he said to me, he says, you know, he says, what's your name? I said, my name's Greg. And he said, you know, all this strife, the, 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 my book has a word for that, and it's called fitna. It means unrest everywhere. He says, you know, Muslims hate Israelis. And I said, yes, so we're, we're seeing evidence of that now. And, you know, it, it's very profound what's happening now. And he says, taps on his book, and he says, that's not in here. Killing of innocent people is not in this book. And I don't believe in any of that. I said, well, that's good. I said, and he, then he looked at me and he said, the prophet, his prophet, Muhammad, says that these are the end of times. That when fitna is everywhere, then times will be ending. And I said, well, you know what? I read a, a black book too, and it's called the Bible. And that's what I believe in. And I said, you know what? My book says the same thing. And I believe, and I agree with you that we are in the end of times. And it's, we, we parted after just that very short conversation with more in common than I would have realized. I firmly believe what I believe and will not be swayed to his. And he probably feels the same way. He didn't try to convince me and I didn't try to convince him. But we established a relationship. We established a dialogue. And I loved that, that I was able to tell someone that I love Jesus this week. When Ananias was sent to find Paul on Straight Street in Damascus after Paul had been blinded, Paul received the Holy Spirit at that meeting. And I'm very sure that Saul, I should say, Saul said for the first time, Jesus, I believe in you. The family today, Dave, Kate, and Taffy, have told us today, Jesus, I believe in you. And I hope all of you are able to say that today. Pull from out of nowhere Rescue from the flame, my everlasting Father. I heard you call my name. The only thing you ask for is that I just believe, and what you promise in return. Salvation I'll receive
those who drink from my well, they will never thirst. For if we simply ask you, Thank you.